Oh boy. This does not look promising, guys. <laughs> But let's give it an effort anyway. So welcome to another Will It Run video. This one on a Mac B42 that's been sitting for a confirmed 30 years up here in Garfield, New Jersey. And I guess I'll start with a quick backstory. The current owner of this shop's father built this back in 1957. And well, this is now going up for sale. A friend of mine reached out to me and said, hey, they gotta get rid of this old Mac. And that's kind of how I got roped into the deal. And so his father acquired this B42 back in the early 70s because he got a towing contract and wanted to have it as a spare truck for in case they needed to, but it never really got used. And it was stored uh, back in the, the, the end bay of that. And he said it, it was, well, son said it was just covered in parts, piled sky high. And fast forward 20 years later, uh, his son got another towing contract, but they came down a lot and they were like, no, you gotta clean this whole lot up. That truck covered in parts, that's gotta go or be running. And so he got it running. That was uh, 30 years ago though, confirmed 30 years ago, parked it over in this spot and it's been sitting ever since. Uh, as you can see with this giant tree growing up through it, it's it's, pushing into the gas tank and really pushing the cab in growing into the winch and uh, well it doesn't look all too promising but I suppose we will give it a valve effort how I'll, I'll just clean some stuff off and, and get things going here for you and then we'll do a full tour With some of the vegetation off, get a good look at the wrecker body and check out these outriggers. I guess you just you pull these out and you can adjust your, your chain length and then spin the pad sideways and that's you know your stabilizers, we'll call them outriggers, I'm not sure. And, and all these it's all just mechanical gears, springs everywhere. It's probably air actuated, I would assume. Installed by Stimmer Winch Co. It's all crooked on there. I love that. Like this was, you know, handmade. Which, by the way, I don't know what year this this truck is, but they these Mac B models were made. I think it was 53 to 66. So he was thinking this might be like a 57, 58, but maybe we can find out later. Uh, looking at the structural members on here, big rust holes down at the bottom, really where it counts. So that this would need some major structural repair, among other things. Uh, you can see kind of a big hoarding pile everywhere. Like this is this was somebody's fan collection and uh, you know drive shaft collection here. You got a tail light off of who knows what. Anybody know what that's off of? With one glimpse, everything is actually in decent shape. Otherwise, on here than I'm seeing, you know, considering the, the tow light bars not on. Roof of the cabs dented in pretty good, but no no rust holes. Those lights look like the old uh, old chrome held up good. And this is a Holmes Wrecker 3540. So that's the model. If you believe that's the model anyway. Oh yeah, chain driven right there. So maybe it's not air actuated. I don't know. It's just PTO driven. And if you guys have any info on this, again throughout the video, love to learn from you guys' comments when you have have either feedback or um, or any info that's useful. The underbody and the frame on this is actually not terrible uh, considering, so this must have not been used in assault very much because hey, you guys can see for yourselves. We'll see up front, but that's not bad looking. That's probably full of water because this, well, this tanks are shot anyway. Yeah, let's just wrap up this exterior tour so you guys can see all the body lines, check everything out. Got these adjustable veins on the rad. Look at that, that ride's in perfect condition. I bet you this thing don't have too many miles. Crossroads of the Revolution, New Jersey. 1975, 1977. Um, I did bring my leaf blower with me this time too. Not that it really matters on this whole rig. These heavy duty air horns. And this door's open. Oh boy, well there's your in interior tour. This is, uh, geez. That's got quite a bit sitting in there. And yeah, the other side of the wrecker, can't really get to. I love how you can just walk on these fenders, even how old they are, nice and sturdy still.
Oh, AC compressor. That looks just like the one that was on the, the Cleveland 351 in the, uh, the Grand Torino. Bunch of junk. Steering's free. Well, steering wheel. I mean, yeah, this is, this is quite the pile in here. Uh, fuse box is all just empty. Not a good sign either. And how many miles do we got? Uh, looks like 32,659 miles. And there is your first glance. This was Max Flathead. I was researching on the way up. And I believe it's the, the Magnadyne 6.8 liter. So I, I guess yeah, it'd be nice if it had the diesel, but that's no big deal. Uh, it's an inline six and geez, now I'm looking at it. Uh, we got one plug missing on the back. That rotted off completely. Oh. <laughs> All right, well that's, that's a red flag, guys. It's got some AC Delcos in it. I'll have to get a ratchet on that crank and see what we got. This one's a little tighter. Good, black and not over full. Well, it was like a half inch over, so maybe we'll still check that drain plug if this engine's not locked, which I'm really thinking it's gonna be. Tell me if you've ever seen a fill like that. Quick action, and you can't lose the, the oil cap. Ingenious. Wow, the front of this frame is beautiful. It's all this original red paint on it. Oh man, absolutely gorgeous. Little, little tiny distributor on there. Nothing as far as you can see. Chokes locked up on the carb. Oh, the throttle wiggles a touch. That's, that's a good sign. Maybe just the linkage locked up. I don't have to flex this air boot out of the way. It just snapped right off. Let's get at that crank bolt. I was talking to him. He said uh, this chain, he used this for pulling stuff in the yard. This is like his reliable anchor point throughout many years. I did throw a shovel in my truck among all this other hoarding collection. I, I really got to get a service truck uh, down the line. Kind of been watching them. Check out this too. He, he gave me this. He said this is an old school blinker of some sort, a turn signal, mechanical one. Oh, never seen one like that. I'll have to research it. Uh, we got the leaf blower too. I should probably blow this off first. Anyway, less falling on this when we go under it. You gotta love how these are dished so that pe penetrant can just sit there and do all the hard work. better than that. Hey, we don't have a bunch of leakage under here or anything. Definitely a heavy spec front suspension. And I, I know I keep saying it, but wow, this is, 
this is really immaculate. I mean, you guys saw the back. That's where everything rots out or up on the front. But I mean, what size crank bolt is that? Geez, that's massive. That looks like a 41 mil or something there. You know, inch and a half. Pull the dried up grease on there and just perfect paint underneath. The biggest I go up to is gonna be this inch and a half. Well, that looks bigger. And probably inch and a three quarter, two inch. Let's see what we got. Mm. I broke this little twig on it, measures inch and five eighths. So 1.625 times 25.4 is 41.27 millimeters. Look at that, 41. I'll take the Varla for Rip to Advance Auto, see if they got one of those. Check out this little heater he gave me too. He said this came out of the, the Mac, but I've never seen anything like it. I'll have to work on that sometime. Oh, this guy got jammed up. He's only got one axle on. And never mind, there's a Harbor Freight over here. Let's see what they got. There you go. Yeah, it's got 41 mil. You know, it's probably 20 bucks for one socket over at Advance, so 75 bucks for that. Can always return it anyway. Oh, we're back. Oh! We can fit anything on this scooter. Length gift storage space. Even got the cup holder. I love how BK brought their old logo back. It's awesome. All that just to see if this engine cranks over. Because I know you guys would have killed me if I hooked the battery up and, and hit the starter motor. 41 and 42. 41 of this. Good idea to pull the plugs first, lube cylinders, but you've seen the way those look. So, oh yeah, she's locked up. Well, we got a good pipe on that. Or step on it from up top. But he was really confident this wouldn't you know, it would just fire right up. Oh, I just loosen the bolt. Let's just give it a little bit of action. See, maybe we're lucky. Sometimes it's just come off. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm, I did not think it was going to come out that easy. Oh, yeah. So the other one probably just broke off from, you know, being bumped. How about this guy? Yep. Look at that. So even though these are all wet with PB Blast, pretty rusted plugs, which always means rusted cylinders too. If, if the plugs are rusted, the cylinders are pretty bad. I don't, I don't have my bore scope. Okay, we got a tight one back here. All right, that one, that one might break. I was just tapping the head some around the plug. Tapping the top of it. Sometimes those vibrations will free the, there it goes. You don't want to break it though. You gotta go by feel. You can kind of feel if it's moving or if it's getting ready to break. And if it gets tight, put it back on tighten. Tighten her back, back and forth. Go as long as you need to go. Even if it's like 10 minutes of back and forth and back and forth, that lube will get in there. That gap's almost all rusted together on there. I did just notice this fender is cracked up here. I was seeing how tough these are. And then a uh, big weld repair here. Nice work though. And for cylinder number six, you can see how much of it's broken off in there. I'm sure we'll be able to get that with uh, an easy out or something down the line if, if need be, if we get this rotating. And these cylinders are going with a mixture of PB Blast, about a tablespoon of ATF in each one, and then we'll top it off with a little two-stroke pre-mix gasoline in each one to help that uh, soak it in. I was able to bust a hole through this last plug, the screwdriver, see if we can get something to grab on that but at least we can get some lube in it now. And yeah, a little bit of rust is going in there, not a big deal. In fact, you know what, yeah, that's fine. We'll just, we'll just shoot lube in there for now. Well, it's 185 pounds on the end of that. That's the fuel line coming from the back and then goes this little strainer right here. Oh, it's actually got a clear bowl on it too. And this looks like mechanical fuel pump. Got a hard line coming off of it to the carb where it was cut, and that's where we would be IV feeding this carb, of course. We tried the 185 pounds on the end of that breaker bar, and I can't really get a pipe on there at a good angle. So, so you can maybe use the winch on the truck, or we'll try jacking up this to get some better leverage. Mark that. We'll see if it rotates. I'm gonna crank away on the jack. Is it going? Is it no, dry? it's stuck. The motor's locked up, yeah. Take the plugs out or no? Yeah, got the plugs out. Those came out. Even that uh, broken one. Well, I didn't get that one out, but uh, yeah. 
I was able to poke through it and well, these these plugs are rusted up so usually that's never a good sign. Uh, no, didn't move. A ratchet moved about four inches though. Guess we just tightened the bolt. With all that pressure on the crankshaft, I think we're gonna try giving her a little bump with the starter motor. Ain't got much to lose. I was talking to the owner. He's like, hey, I'll just throw a battery on it. See if it cranks. He didn't care if not anything happens. So, uh, massive starter motor down here. There's better look at it. You can see that cable comes up to just a mechanical starter switch. Oh, well, that's simple enough. Yeah, I believe the batteries go on the floor in here, but good luck with that also running low on time uh, he's like gotta get out of here in the next hour unfortunately that starter switch is locked up on the inside so it took the main cable off hooked it right to the battery this is hooked to the engine ground <laughs> it's gonna be probably just a shower of sparks but let's give it a go man we got the ratchet on the crank too but that should just ratchet if it goes oh all right the starter and get uh, went but didn't engage so we got to find the, the primary wire to the starter Wow, listen to that baby though, oh yeah. Woo! It's not uh, throwing the fork over. Actually, it's only that fat gauge wire going to the starter. You can see the inside of the flywheel there, super rusty teeth. Uh, so that means that the Bendix is, is just seized up. Maybe I'll try hitting it with a hammer a few times. Might as well get a socket for the crank case drain bolt while we're down there, see if there's any water. Um, 27 don't fit and 30 mil is too loose. How about 28? No, come on. What are the odds? So, stupid kit don't come with it. Hoping this is all just oil, but oh, no, it's got water. All right, let's let that water out of this thing. Yeah, that's what happens with the condensation. There's the oil. So, you want to let it trickle out, though, until you got straight oil. Otherwise, if this thing does start up and rotate, well, you're going to just you know fill the whole engine with milk uh, milkshake which is a lot harder to get rid of and so you do it nice and slow let all that water go down to the drain plug now two minutes later still got some water coming out see if you go too quick all the oil will come like that but if you go nice and slow uh, just the water so that, that's the majority of it out of there probably probably about a half gallon or so with this carburetor open like that, I could have had water trickling down during the downpour going inside those cylinders, and that's kind of worst case because then the cylinders get rust streaks down them, just just humid humid environment in there, real rusty. Uh, but with only being a half gallon, that could have just been condensation as you get temperature fluctuation, uh, the humid air that gets inside of the the engine and condensates on the walls and then runs down to the bottom of the pan. So that, that could be the case. But I just whacked the starter a bunch with a big mallet. Let's give this one more go. Yeah, it's not flying out. Unless, of course, this is 24 volt, but I don't think it is. Oh, all right, that was something there. You guys heard that? Okay. All right, there we go. That was engagement. And, uh, yeah, no rotation of the motor at all. I'm watching the fan over here. I'll point you toward the, toward the fan a little bit, so if it does rotate, you guys will see it too. Let's give it one more go. Man, we got all that pressure on the crankshaft too. There it is. Nope, all right, that's all she's got without blowing the, the battery uh, terminals off of there. And it's safe to say we're gonna have to let this one soak for some time uh, before there's any possibility of rotating the engine. What's nice with these flatheads though is, I mean, there's, there's really not too much to take the head off from what I can see, just zip all those off. So I'll hose those down. Maybe we can come back another time and take a look at the pistons. As I was showing you, I mean, I don't know what the inside of this head looks like, but I assume this is just the, the kind of intake area similar to a Briggs and Stratton flathead engine. And then the, you know, the pistons must be over here. That would be kind of cool to, to take a gander in there. Um, but yeah, I, I guess we're gonna work toward a an outro on this is actually asking him Hey, can we cut this tree down today? It'd be kind of cool to get on video, but he, he actually wants to leave it for now uh, so. Now there's nice shade over too for working. I just can't argue with that But what I would love to see is if one of you guys love these old Mack trucks and you either 
uh, you know, just want this for parts or better yet, want to maybe try and refurbish this and you're not too far from North Jersey, I'm up in Garfield, you know, get in contact with me. Shoot me a message on Instagram or Facebook under the same handle, No Nonsense Know How, or you can uh, contact me on the, the About section of my channel page, it has my email. It's like encrypted, you got to click the little thing or whatever and it'll show you. And I, I know I'm kind of rushing the outro here, guys, but I don't want to keep him in his shop any longer than he needs to be. So, uh, he said, got a few more minutes, but uh, I'll try to get you maybe a few more shots underneath in case for anybody again uh, interested in buying this it does come with all the parts too if you're interested in that uh, there's one more glance these doors aren't bad no glass in that uh, passenger side and the, <laughs> the triangle glass is cracked but the windshield and back windows aren't cracked you know they're real foggy so uh, bombs aren't super rotted out though i mean they're a little rotted oh here's here's our chassis number it's uh B42T 4945 on the gas tank got an underwriter laboratory sticker it's amazing that's still intact like that Camden New Jersey Cutler Metal Products built this oh 54-12 so December 1954 this tank was made and that means this is probably a 1955 and this the main structural components on this are actually completely fine it's really just the bottom of these where I'm sure the condensation ran down and set set below got one more tree growing out of the wrecker bed but that one's not alive oh it does have an established root system though uh and a lot of you guys are commenting on uh like the cat video everybody said i got poison ivy i don't, I don't really get poison ivy so I, i've got it a few times when i was a kid and it's like a one day thing and then and then it's over i'll drop these plugs back on top a thread or two so nothing goes inside i'll let that lube soak in Uh, geez, a couple clips of the shop that's going to be closing. Open since 1957. Tell me that's not kind of like an old school mechanics wall. Big old anvil. Yoast Manufacturing Co. Medville, PA. Old Maco box. <laughs> Coil and wire collection with distributors in there too. You guys know if you work as a mechanic. You know, yeah, that's why I, I try to organize all my bolts as I take them off because then you end up with a pile and it's, it's hard to find things. Of course, that's easier method. It takes a lot more time to uh, to organize them off the rip. Oh, your heater control. This, this guy saved everything. But hey, end of the world type of stuff. And then he's got a whole whole back room full of full of parts. All the old school headlamps. I actually gave me a couple that fit the Monte Carlo. I'm gonna cap the day off by taking the Varla for a nice cruise, maybe across the GWB, starting down in Hackensack over at the Dairy Queen. Check out that Gambrel, Gambrel, I think it's called, roof. Gives you a nice like six foot eave around the entire building. But you know, if, if not for doing things like this, it just wouldn't be worth it to drive an hour and a half away and, and do videos on an old Mack truck. This makes it a win. This baby is 35 miles an hour. It's been a month later and it turns out I got another chance to take a look at the Mac again and he hasn't sold or done anything to it so I'm hoping after sitting for a month that maybe the lube has worked into those cylinders I did actually pour some diesel that day before I left as well about oh I don't know maybe half a cup in each one let's jump onto there and see if maybe we got lucky I did bring my standard sockets so inch and five eighths is the proper size and let's give her a good tug a lug oh no that's tight. I mean, I'll be honest, I've never really had good luck with pouring lube down cylinders and getting them to break free when they're seized up. Let's pop this flathead off and see what it looks like. Sprayed down all those nuts, but I just realized something that might be a problem is this distributor. If that's seized in, uh, well, hopefully maybe it'll just come up with the head. But I'll try to get that out first. Because uh, if it doesn't come up with the head, you know, of course I've never worked on one of these. Let's see why it wouldn't. Actually, look at the cap on the inside. Freshy. 
Oh, and something else that crossed my mind since I was last here was the fact that I only put 12 volts to the starter and it could be a 24 volt. Now he said he last started this with a 12 volt battery, but that was, you know, 30 years ago. However, I did just look over at the alternator. It's got a Delco Remy 12 volt in it, made in USA. Uh, so yeah, definitely a 12 volt system now. And from what I was reading online, these early trucks, if this actually is a 55, would have came with a six volt system for the lights, uh, positive ground, and then had a 12 volt starting system. And there was some, some kind of switch over circuit that was prone to failing. So a lot of guys would just switch these all over to 12 volt. Let's see if she pops up. Guess I should try twisting it first, but. Oh, I think I saw it budge actually. Oh yeah. Yeah, Dizzy's coming up. Sweet. Yeah, some rust on there. Four nuts with washers, one stubborn washer. Come on. There she is. Looking around the perimeter, it does seem to have one lip built in on this side for prying it up. But make sure I get everything off. budge a little bit I get the feeling this is not gonna pop right off did spray each stud again but you know with these studs if there's any rust down in between the head it's I, mean, I can hear it's a little it's broken free but it's gonna be tough slowly but surely she's coming up almost would have been easier to go get a stud puller because you gotta come up Real even on this. I don't have a good good way to grab it. And then just rock it back for it. Yeah. Should pick them up. No. And you got the, the valves are on that side too, so I mean. Yeah, I see. Yeah. That um, not ideal. If she goes side. a little crooked, she gets jammed up is the problem. If I had like slightly tapered wood shims, because then you're not going to damage the thing either, you know? I am the same. Yeah, you hammer those in from the side. You want to do it? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let me try hitting it with the hammer so it goes down. So, it's really rusty, isn't it? Yeah, so I mean that. There's no, wash, you know, there's no washer on there, is there? No, no, I got the washer off. So, I mean, I wonder if we come up this time. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. I think it'll come up now. Yeah, we got it now. There we go. Oh, oh, man. Man. Let me get in here. Ready? Yeah. Right. Yep. No. Come on, right. baby. Hang on, so watch your fingers out. I, I'd slide your fingers out. If it comes I'm down. Good. Let, right. let me get down on a good footing. I'm just worried if it comes down. Yeah, I'm good. Crosses your fingers. Oh, what is poking me in the leg? Oh yeah, that feels 
Ready? Yeah. Shake, 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 shake. There we go. Oh. Woo! That was fun. <laughs> you can see cylinders number six and three have a lot of rust. And wait till you see the cylinders. However, the others, not so bad. Nope, let me get in here and give you a look. Alrighty. So number three, pretty darn bad. Look how far that rust is growing off of the cylinder walls. You know, something like that, salvageable, no problem. And number six was, piston was all the way up, so that's, that's not horrible either. You can see the, the PB blast and, and diesel that I poured in there made it past the pistons that aren't horrible but the ones that are rusted up good you know it never did walk past and now you get a good look at how the flathead engine is it's just like a Briggs and Stratton and I suppose even if I did have a bore scope the first day you wouldn't really be able to slide it by there and see the cylinders and maybe maybe with a, a low profile one but not the one I have not even getting a budge out of them uh, we're gonna call that locked up and needs a motor rebuild. Well, if I was getting paid by the hour, I would definitely continue on on this truck and get it running. But I'm not, and you know, we got plenty of other projects to, to tear into. This truck is for sale, as I think I stated in the beginning of the video, Garfield, New Jersey. Now, originally he mentioned $5,000 for it, and I don't think it's worth that with, with what it needs. You know, you guys have seen. Uh, but he did say he would take 3500 as his bottom dollar. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of that or, you know, what price you would be offering if you want it. Shoot me an email or reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. You would be responsible for removal of it. So you know, just taking that tree down and it probably doesn't roll, I'm sure. Uh, but if you guys are interested, yeah, definitely let me know on that. Really would love to see it go to a good home. So hopefully somebody reaches out to me. I'd, I'd be ashamed to, to see it be scrapped. Like usual, thank you so much for tuning into this video, guys. Uh, hopefully you still found it informative or entertaining. And that is gonna conclude the 1955 Mac B42 Wrecker. All righty, see you guys.